Hey there, this is Matt 2 in Unit 7, Worksheet number 5, looking at angles of elevation and angles of depression. Okay, and so you began first of all with this picture here from number, number 1. You have a guy at the top who's looking down. There's a boat down here. We can see it's on the water. So he's maybe on a cliff looking down there. And we have different angles here, right? You have angle 1, angle 2, 3, and 4. It asks, first of all, what is an, which ones are angles of elevation? So our angles of elevation are ones where you're going to be, in a sense, kind of, kind of looking, looking up, so to speak, right? And we also have, I don't know, like maybe it's a submarine down. I'm not sure what that is. So our angles of elevation are going to be these guys right here. Angle 2 and angle 4 are our angles of elevation, okay? So we have angle 2 and angle 4 for our angles of elevation. In terms of our angles of depression, angles of depression are ones where your your straight side, your parallel to the ground side is up above here, and we're going down that way there, or so number one, or over here, three, which is there and there. So it really depends on, in a sense, where your horizon line is or your 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 line is parallel to the ground is going to be. So our angle of depression here is one and three. Okay. Now, in terms of the, uh, the next question, is an important one. If the horizontal lines are parallel, so if these dotted lines are all parallel to each other here, all the way through there, which pairs of angles must be congruent? Okay, that means they're going to be the same angle measurements. So in terms of things being congruent, it works a little bit like, kind of like the letter Z. Okay, so it's like this and this and this. When we look at this angle measurement here like Z, what happens in terms of congruency Okay, so we use a different color here, is that angle one actually matches angle two. Okay, so angle one is gonna match angle two. Angle one is congruent to angle two. And in a similar way, we would say that angle three is congruent to angle four. All right, so angle three is congruent to angle four. All right, so that's what we have there. So do the same thing then for number two. Let's take a look at it just on the same page here. Okay, looking at number two, which angles are the angles of elevation? So again, elevation is you're starting, if you look at your horizon line, you know, like this, our lines like that, and say which one of these angles is going up from there. So our angles of elevation are the ones that go up. So our ones that are going up are gonna be angle number six, and then also right here, angle eight, are the elevation angles. So we'd say angle six and angle eight. Angles of depression, the ones that go from the, like a parallel horizon line and down are angle five and then angle seven are ones that go down. So angle five and angle seven. In terms of the ones being congruent, we look at our Z, right? So our Z here, the ones that are congruent are gonna be your five and six. So angle five is congruent to angle six. And then finally over here, our big Z is going to say that angle 7 is congruent to angle 8. Okay? Now for this next one here, we have a lot of word problems. I want you to sketch some things out and then solve them. So let's see what we can do here. So when we solve these here, we want to find uh, each length to the nearest tenth and each angle to the nearest whole degree. So at a certain time, a post 6 feet tall, so here's a post 6 feet tall, cast a shadow. That's a 3 foot long shadow. Okay, probably should put it on the outside there. What is the angle of elevation of the sun? Okay, so we have a shadow here, and we're looking at the angle of elevation. So angle of elevation means we're looking at a, a, a line that's kind of horizontal to the ground, like so, and going up this way. So this becomes our angle we're talking about right there. So in this case here, we have the opposite side, and we have an adjacent side. So I'm going to use the tangent of the unknown angle and set that equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is 3. Okay. All right. I can reduce this to 6 divided by 3 is actually going to be reduced down to 2. To get the theta by itself, I'm going to say the inverse tangent of 2. And my solution for here, using my calculator, all right, second tangent and we do 2 it's going to be 63.4 and it wants us with the nearest whole degree so if I had 63.4 I 
our nearest whole degree is going to be 63 degrees for <laughs> number three. Number seven, from a point 80 meters from the base of the tower, okay, so here's a tower, lovely, 80 meters from the base of the tower, the angle elevation at the tip of the tower is 28 degrees. So here's my tower, and I'm 80 meters away from the base. Let's pretend this is my tower here. So I'm 80 meters away, and my elevation to the tip of the tower is 28 degrees. How tall is the tower? So that's my setup here. So I have a degree measurement, and I can see that I have an opposite, and I have an adjacent. And once again, though, I'm really, so that means I'm looking at the tangent, but I have an angle. Tangent 28 is going to be equal to my opposite over my adjacent. I'll multiply both sides by 80. Multiply both sides by 80. So that I have 80 times the tangent of 28 equals x. And so we do that. 80 times the tangent of 28 is equal to 42.53. All right, so 42.53, 42.53. I need to round to the nearest tenth, so that means I'm just going to get rid of three, and we'll have 42.5 uh, meters in this case here. All right, number five. So the ladder that is 20 feet long is leaning against the side of a building. So here's my building. We have a ladder 20 feet long, leaning against the side of the building. The angle formed between the ladder and the ground is 75 degrees, so 75 degrees there. How far is the bottom of the ladder from the base of the building? Bottom of the ladder, base of the building is X right there. So looking at my angle here, I don't have an opposite. I definitely have a hypotenuse and I have an adjacent. So that's gonna be using the cosine of 75 degrees equals my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So I'll multiply both sides by 20. So I have 20 times the cosine of 75 equals x. Get the calculator out, and we do 20 cosine of 75, and we press equals, and we end up with a 5.17. So 5.17, and we round to the nearest tenth, so that's gonna round up, so that becomes 5.2. In this case here, we're measuring feet. All right, number six. A person in a lighthouse, uh, in a lighthouse 22 meters above sea level, sights a buoy in the water. So here's a person up in a lighthouse, right? Here they are hanging out up here. A buoy, a buoy, a buoy in the water, 22 meters up, 22 up there. Yeah, the angle of depression to the buoy, so here's our, our dotted line here, um, is 25 degrees, right? So we have this here. And there's the buoy out here, bobbing out in the water. Okay, there's this. So our depression means we're going down. So this is our depression angle right here. This angle here on the outside of our triangle is 25 degrees. Now remember we talked about the Z stuff. So our Z goes here, here, here. So if that's 25, this angle measurement is also 25 degrees right there. So if the angle of depression of the buoy is 25 degrees, how far from the base of the lighthouse is the buoy? So here's our x value there. So I have an angle, 25. I have an opposite, and I have an adjacent. So I'm gonna use the tangent of 25 and set it equal to my opposite, which is 22, over the adjacent, which is x. When I have it like this, remember I flip those around. So that x equals 22 divided by the tangent of 25. All right, and so we do 22 divided by tangent 25, and that's gonna equal 41.79. So 41.79, and then we wanna round that up to the nearest 10th. So this is rounds up to an eight, so that becomes 41.8 for my solution right there. Oops, oh, sorry, I wrote down wrong, 47.1. Sorry, got ahead of myself once again. This was 47.17, so that becomes 47.2 for my solution here, and we're looking at meters, so we keep it in meters there. Okay, and observe at the top of a building. Top of a building, there they are. See the car on the road below. Here's our car on the road below, okay? The angle of depression to the car is 28 degrees. So again, angle of depression is technically the one that's right here, 28. 
that because I had that Z thing here, this angle is also 28 degrees right in here, okay? If the car is 50 meters from the building, when, he says, when it is seen, how tall is the building? So we have, we need to find the opposite, and we're given the adjacent, because that's our hypotenuse over here. So we're gonna find the tangent of 28 degrees equals our opposite over our adjacent, which is 50. So to solve this here, we get 50 times the tangent of 28 equals x. So we do 50, and then we do tangent of 28, and that's gonna equal 26.58. So 26.58, round in there is tenths, round up to 26.6, and this is again meters, and that becomes our solution for number seven. All right, let's take a look at the back side real quick here. Okay, number eight, we have a kite, right? Flying at an angle of elevation of about 55 degrees. So if you have a kite, someone's on the ground, holding it here, and we have 55 degrees from wherever it's at going up, angle of elevation, so it's increasing there to there. Ignoring the sag and the string, find the height of the kite. So up here, height of the kite, how tall up is the kite here? If you've used 85 meters of string. So if it's gone out 85 meters, how high up is the kite? So we have, looking for an opposite, and we have a hypotenuse here. So that's gonna be the sine of 55. It's gonna equal the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 85. So we do 85 times the sine of 55 to equal x. So we do, again, 85 sine 55, and that equals 69.62. 69.62, nearest whole number then, or nearest tenth is 69.6, and that's in meters there. All right, okay, on this next section here, um, using triangle, find the value of each trigonometric ratio in reduced fraction form. So the sine of A, sine is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse, right? So that's gonna be two root three over four. Two over four becomes one over two, so that becomes root three over two. All right, looking at number 11, the cosine of B. So here's B, that's gonna be the adjacent, which will be four. That's my next one because this is my opposite, that becomes adjacent. Adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is four, times over two root three. I don't wanna have a root three in the bottom, so I'm gonna multiply both top and bottom by root three, and that becomes two times three, which is six, uh, and I have on top four root three. This reduces down to two goes in here, and goes in there, so I have two root three over three becomes my solution for the cosine of B, I think, let's see, two root three, that becomes three, two times three is six, four root three there, and then two goes into two times three times, that's what I got there. Looking at my notes here, real quickly, cosine of B, cosine is adjacent, right? Adjacent, cosine, soca, over hypotenuse. So our adjacent was, Oh, that's what I did. Sorry. Back it up. I flipped those. I thought I was doing something wrong here. So let's look at helps to do this right. <laughs> do what I didn't do. That becomes my opposite. This is my hypotenuse. This is my adjacent. Sorry about that. So we're going to go 2 root 3 adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 4. That reduces down to 1 over 2. So again, I have root 3 over 2. Sorry about that. And that's that one there. In terms of the sine of 60, okay, what are we talking about here, sine of 60? When you look over at the triangle, I don't see any angle measurements, right? There's no angle measurements there, but looking at the side lengths, we can tell this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The reason we can tell that is we have an x, we have 2x, and we have x root 3. Whenever you're doing that triangle like that, the one that's the smallest value is coming off of the 30, which makes this the 60. So the sine of 60 degrees, sine of 60 degrees here, right? Sine is gonna be, once again, this is like the sine of A, it's the same thing there. It's gonna be root three over two, because it's a sine of 60, 60 is the A value, and we're good to go there. Okay, 15, 16, 17, you're gonna use your calculator and plug that in, so I'll let you do that there on your own. 
Let me do a couple of these on the bottom and I'll wrap it up for the day. It says solve for x. So we have 48 degrees there. We recognize that we have an opposite over here. We have a hypotenuse and we have an adjacent. So I want to find the adjacent hypotenuse. That's gonna be the cosine of 48 degrees equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we'll multiply 37 times the cosine of 48 and make that equal to x. So 37 cosine of 48, and that's gonna equal 24.7, 24.75 actually. So the nearest tenth is gonna be 24.8 for our solution for number 19. Okay, and then finally let's look at number 21. Okay, 21, we have a triangle like this. We want to find x. If this whole thing is 18, right, we're going to say the value here is 9 and 9. Okay, and it's a a squared plus b squared equals c squared kind of thing. So we can say that 9 squared plus x squared is going to equal 14 squared. So this and that and that. Okay, so we have 81 plus x squared equals 14 squared. 14 squared, I have no idea. So 14 times 14. It's 196. That's amazing. So we subtract 81 from both sides, and x squared is equal to, in our case here, 115. So we're going to find the square root of 115, and I do not know what that is. So if I use a calculator and I do square root, second square root 115, we find that it's equal to 10.72. x equals 10.72 or just simply 10.7 there. If they want to find a decimal there, no problem, that works out. Okay, I'm gonna stop there for the day because I did all the other word problems, leave you one on your own. Good luck, we'll see you next time.